Time and events is the topic of this section. Before we really dive into it, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about circular references. We're going to find out what they are, and you're going to discover that probably you use them often. I'm going to show you how to use them less. Because one, they make it less performance-wise. It makes it more hard for your processor to process your application. And two, it opens the door to code that's a lot more sloppy. So we're going to take a look into that, see how to make it better. We will look better also, and it will also improve overall the performance of our applications. So let's jump right into it. Welcome to a brand new chapter. And in this chapter, I want to talk about circular functions. Now, circular referral is, you know, in the most simplistic explanation of it is recursiveness, if you know what that is, which is when a function calls itself. But beyond that, a recur circular function is a function that actually talks to local variables that are inside a function that are above it. For example, in this case, we created the variable that, and then inside of our alarm clock, we created a reference back to that variable that's sitting outside of that method, of that function. What we basically did is we bounded this function to exist forever, because as long as the, that variable exists, so does this variable exist. And we're creating a, a problem because this type of problem, especially if you're adding events to something on the fly, imagine that in our clock, every single one of these items were clickable and had an event and had a circular reference back to the original object. This type of behavior would very quickly create a memory leak that would be impossible to fix. So what we want to do next is basically revisit this logic that we have in this alarm clock and get rid of all circular references. In this case, get rid of the reference of the that. Now to do that, the easiest solution for us is to take advantage of the fact that now we're using jQuery. So to solve this problem, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this code, but instead of using the traditional HTML, I'm going to take advantage of jQuery. So let's get started. So the first step that I want to do is I'm going to go ahead here and just create that DOM element. And instead of referring back to this get element by ID, I'm going to go ahead and use the jQuery acronyms. And I'm just going to make sure that I'm getting it by ID. So I'm going to refer to that item. We don't need that anymore. And we actually want to get rid of the reference to that. So I'm going to go ahead and immediately delete it. The next thing that I want to do is I want to refer to our DOM element. And to do that, we already have our DOM element. So I'm going to our head here and I'm going to add an attribute to it. I want to make it editable. So I'm going to go ahead here and just ask for that property. And I'm going to set its value to be true. All right. So just by doing this, we should already have our document uh, working more or less. All that's left for us to do is to make sure that we are not using both. We talked about this earlier about anonymous functions that we're not using anonymous functions and also that we're not having internal calls to our element. So what I'm going to do next is just uh, comment out this whole block just so we could test things out before we continue onwards. And I'm just going to get rid of all these references. And what I want to do is I want to grab this function and I'm just going to create it as a static property inside of our prototype after we imported the prototype. And I already started it in our on blur here. So I'm going to, you know, let me just go ahead here and just delete it because I was playing around while you were gone. So I'm going to go ahead here and just copy our prototype. And I'm going to set it and call it on focus. And I'm going to set our function inside here. And let me just comment out also the content of it, because really what I want to get to, I want to get to have the same this inside of my element, or I want to have access to my actual scope of my on of my object itself, which is our alarm clock, not the actual HTML element. But in general, if I would run my application now, and I'm just going to trace out this, and I'm going to also do a console log, and I'm going to trace out our LM, our events target. So all that's left for me to do is to call the on focus. I'm going to go right above here and just delete this call. And instead of that call, I'm just going to go onto my DOM. I'm going to create an on and I'm going to go ahead and ask for an on focus using jQuery. The next parameter that I'm going to send in is going to be the function itself, which in this case is going to be the this on focus. Now, if I run the application just like this, notice what I'm going to get inside of my inside of my console. So first of all, I have a little error here on line 214. So let's quickly fix that. 
214. 214. Oh, because we have your extra stuff that are not needed there. Let's save it. Go back into our application. Click on refresh. And we can see that our application is loading. If I click into the element, we're getting the element, that DOM element twice, which is not what we want. We want the, this to actually remain the actual alarm clock that we're in. So to do that, the next step is I'm going to take advantage of another jQuery function. And this jQuery function is called proxy or really dot proxy. Now the dot proxy, what it does is basically enables me to glue a new this to my function. So in this case, I want to tell my on focus, by the way, your reference, your proxy is going to be this, which is our alarm clock in this case. Now, if we run this again and save this and run our application one more time, we're going to see that one, we keep a reference to our original object and we also keep a reference to our element. And now that we have this access, we could go back into our code and we could get rid of these traces. And instead of that, we could go ahead and, and figure out, you know, let me just, instead of that, I'm going to, the, this itself, we already know what it is. This is our target. So I could go ahead and create here really quickly a variable if I want to. Um, and I'll just call this our DOM and I'm going to go ahead and make sure that instead of viewing, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just position my inner HTML for this element. And by the way, I probably would want to use jQuery at this stage, but I'm going to leave the, the logic the same as it was before and just make sure that wherever I'm referencing to this, I'm going to change it to the reference of the actual element itself. Now the logic here is not necessarily the best of logic, but it's going to work for us right now. So I'm adding all these elements inside and last but not least, now I could, now that I have access to my element, I could approach my original element, my original object, instead of calling it that, call it directly in its actual name and call it this. So if I go ahead and I just give you a little save and I click on refresh, we should get all of this working. But how about we add to all the other functions before we complete this? So I'm going to go ahead here and very quickly, Go ahead and also add the logic so we could test out and see if our focus and our release all in our blur are all working as planned. So I'm just going to go ahead here, copy all of this, paste it right inside of our on blur to be on blur. Now let's go ahead and see where do we change our logic. So again, I'm going to get a, I'm going to create a reference to my DOM, which is going to be E dot target. And I'm going to go ahead and just change any reference to this to turn into our DOM element. Is there anything else here that we want to uh, change here? No. Now, now that our every reference to that will come back to be this, because now we have a direct reference to our element, which is want to make sure that we covered all of them. So we only have DOM or this, no that. Let me just get rid of that. And I think we have one more left. So we could go ahead and delete this item right here. And all that's left is this last item. Cut it out, delete everything here and go ahead and just paste it. Copy our function structure. And all that's left for me to do as the creator and on reset. And I'm just going to just copy this string because I'm probably going to need it in a second. And I'm just going to go ahead here, refer to this and set our tick to be true. And all that's left for me to do is copy this, move it up and turn on our proxy calls to both oh, three other methods that we have left here. Now we've done quite a few things to improve performance beyond the fact that we got rid of anonymous function. We got rid of circular calls. We moved our function definitions to prototype, which will automatically improve our performance. And last but not least, we also moved and are using jQuery, which will automatically manage our, our memory in a much more efficient way, making sure that we could release things whenever we need to release them. All that's left for me to do is uh, make sure that I have my on reset and connect it to the right place. And let's give it a try. Hopefully all these changes that we've just made now on the fly will actually bring us back to an application that's working. So I'm going to go ahead and click a refresh. So our time is clicking. When we click inside, time freezes. When you click out, we have an alarm. It is time to wake up. So there we go. We created the perfect 
application that now is cutting down on a lot of performance and we already started beautifully our chapter and this is true to any scenario where you have a referral where you have circular referrals so make sure you go through all the code and try to find any place where you have a function that is standing on its own that is not that is not defined externally, that is talking to itself or talking to other variables that are sitting inside of a function above it and do what we just did right now. And that is gonna automatically improve your performance. It's gonna be a big step on the direction of improvement, especially if this is something that's happened repeatedly, is something that's happening that you're adding and removing and adding and removing, which are usually places where memory leaks are love to happen. All right, so that's it about circular references.